So for part three of this mini course on virtual displacement, we're gonna talk about how we create all these pipes and all this basic eye candy that surrounds our kind of our landing pad here or whatever we wanna call our main hero object. And the question is, how can we do this efficiently and quickly? Because as you can imagine, if you had to sit down and model all of this, it would take you days, maybe even weeks. So let's take a look at that. So here we are back in our scene. We saw from last episode, we have a lot more detail in our scene because we now have all this bump and texture map decals going on. If we go to a solid view here, and let's go ahead and turn on wireframe so we can see what's going on here. And we can see that we have simplified our display into real geometry and we did that in part one of this mini course. Now what we want to do is we want to actually put some pipes all around all of this and how do we do that? Well the way we're going to do that is we're going to actually use this exact same geometry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it. I'll use the shift D command to duplicate and move it off and then I'll right click and now I've dropped it back in the same place and now I've got this plane one right and now I'm going to go into local mode now. So now this is the only thing in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and let's talk about our strategy. And our strategy is really gonna be that I wanna expand all this outward so that all the stuff goes outside of that. And I can use the displace modifier to do that. And then I'm gonna to wanna to use a wireframe modifier to actually create the pipes and the tubes in the pathways. But before we do that, one thing that I know that I don't want is I don't want pipes running all over this surface and all over some of the top level surfaces. So how do I fix that? Well, I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna tab in here, I'll go into my plane mode and I'm gonna say select coplanar, right? So I can right click and make that a quick key. So, so that's what that does. So I can hit my Q button and make this go coplanar. So I'm gonna select all the topmost objects and also I wanna get a lot of the floor objects as well. So you can see this is what we've got. Let's go ahead and move this down a little bit more and take a look at this. Let's try that one too. Okay, and when I've done that, I'll hit the X key and I'm gonna delete the faces. So that's what I have. So now I've got this geometry that I'm gonna work with. And so the next thing I wanna do is I wanna call this geometry based on the scene that I'm using. Now you don't have to do this, but I'm not gonna be animating this particular scene. So I'm gonna go hit the numpad zero and go into my camera view. And while I'm still in edit mode, I'm gonna go into my vertice mode one. Actually, we'll go into solid mode so you can see this. And I'll just go into this X-ray mode. So I'll grab all of this. X vertices, and I'll just kind of do the same thing over here. X vertices, and I'll do the same thing over here. X, X vertices, and here, X vertices. And let's zoom out, let's get some of this stuff. You may remember that previously in our camera, we had this pass part out. I'm not sure if that's the right name or not, but we turn that. So we can basically, I can turn that back down if I want to see if there's anything else out here. And it looks like we've got pretty much everything that we needed. So. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll move out of that. And this is really, you know, what we've got. Let me maybe grab some of this. Okay, so now that we have this cleaned up, let's tap, let's tap back into the, our object. And let's start to set up some, uh, let's turn off the x-ray. Let's start to set up some modifiers to, to, to make this work. So the first modifier that I'm gonna add is, I'm gonna add a weld modifier. And what I wanna do is I wanna zoom in here on some of these parts and I wanna basically see if I can't simplify them because I know I'm gonna create a lot of problems when I try and create a wireframe modifier on top of that. So I'm gonna just drag this down a little bit, maybe like that. And you can see I've, I've simplified quite a bit, maybe too much actually. So let's, let's pull it out just a little more. See, as I'm looking at it, I can start to see what's going on in here. Maybe something like that, 0.03, seems to probably work pretty good for this particular object. Okay, now once I've done that, next I'm gonna add a displacement modifier. And so I need to basically get out of local mode and let's look at this as I add a displacement modifier. So I'll go over here, hit the displace. Whoa, that's crazy, crazy large. So with my displace, I'm gonna use a strength of, let's try 0 0.015, something like that. And we'll see that Okay, so now you can see it's gotten bigger. And then let's look at what else we have 
in here. We have the direction set to normal. I think we're pretty good on that. So the very next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a wireframe modifier on, the, on top of that. And whoa, that's gotten crazy too. So let's make the thickness uh, something like 0.1. And you know, you might have to play around with these numbers to get what you want, but I'm gonna say uh, that instead of even, I wanna make this relative and I'm gonna turn off even. So let's talk about this for a second. So when I put on relative, it means that all of these objects are gonna be sized based on the relative size. So in tiny groupings like this, I'm gonna get much tinier wireframes and in larger ones like this, let's kind of go into, let's, let's go into local mode here. We can see it a little better. On the larger groupings, I'll get larger wireframes and on the smaller groupings, I'll get smaller wireframes. Now, if I turn it on to even, and turn relative off, then I'm gonna to have to adjust this to something like 0 0.001, something like that. Now everything's exactly the same, right? So you can choose whichever you want. Uh, you may find that uh, one will suit you better than the other. For this one, I think I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use relative at 0.1 and just you know stick with this. Now, one of the things that you're gonna find out is that this will create some, you know, some kind of really weird and maybe even crappy geometry, you know, geometry that crosses over on itself, stuff like that. And so what that means is that when we get ready to render this, we may find that we get some unexpected smoothing artifacts. And so the way we solve that is, let me go ahead and let's uh, toggle the stack. And if you don't see this, by the way, you're going to want to use modifier tools, you know, turn that on. And that gives us these four buttons right here. And it's a really important for me at least. <laughs> I use them all the time. And what I did is the toggle stack just collapses and expands everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one more modifier and that's going to be a weighted normal on top of all of this. And it says enable auto smooth and object data properties. So I'm going to go into my vertex, go into my normals and turn on auto smooth. And I'm probably going to make that maybe 90 because I kind of do want all these things to have more of a smooth effect to it. I, don't, I know that we're going to get some artifacting going on. It should be shaded smooth. It is, yeah. Um, and, but still, even so, uh, I even might make it 180. Even so, I'm going to end up with the ability to fix a lot of that artifacting in this weighted normal. And I'll use face influence. Okay, so let's go back to our scene. And I'm going to pull this back up so we can look at our texture. And you can see there we have one of those. Uh, issues I was talking about. And you can see that you, you, you'll you get some of those uh, as we go forward. So if you see this happening and we still aren't getting it fixed through the weighted normal, what we can do is we can adjust the material to fix it. So as we try and troubleshoot this glare issue, there's a couple things I'll point out. Uh, one is that this is already shaded flat and we really want it to shade it smooth. And by shading it smooth, we're going to get a little better light dispersion because we don't have a really strong and large angle of dispersion for our glare. Another way to do it is to come down and look at the specular. And you can also remove that using the specular if you have to. So those are a couple things. Now, the other part is that remember that when you're in cycles, you're not going to get that same level of glare. It'll be a lot less pronounced. So that's something also to keep in mind. So as I'm looking at this, I actually went back in and I uh, adjusted this setting right here, this well to 0.004 to get a little better, cleaner, some cleaner geometry around here. Sometimes you may have to do that. You may have to check, check that out and see how that works. Okay, so now that I have this set up the way I want it, the next thing to do is to uh, update the material settings for it. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy the actual material. So with this selected, I'm gonna make a copy of it. And I just hit this button, new material, and we're gonna go be displaced. So that's a brand new material for us. Okay. And so now that we have this new material, I'm going to, let's just kind of look at it in this view here and we'll basically turn off our show overlays. And I want to adjust the amount of lights that are going on in here. And remember, this is the scale. If we zoom all the way out and we look at that, this is our dot grid. If you remember from our first session and I'll just adjust this down. Let's say, let's go down to maybe 0.44, something like that. So basically it's it's uh, creating the dots that are a little bit smaller. And I think I'll go in here. Let's just create, you know, the colors a little differently. You can start to see that they're gonna show up a little differently around here. And maybe instead of 10, let's make them five, make them a little smaller. So I'm gonna go back to our original surface here. 
let's go to the rendered area. And I want to, I was kind of looking at this and thinking, I want a little bit more variation on here. So how can I do that? Well, really, I'm going to adjust the roughness. And the way I'll do that is I'll take this color ramp here, Shift D, just duplicate it, stick it here. I'm gonna grab the color node off of here, stick it into here, and then stick this into our roughness like this. And it's gonna give us a little bit more variety on our services because we can look at this and we can see that the white areas are gonna be very dull, whereas the dark areas are gonna be very shiny. And we can kind of start to see that here. So that's in, that's in our A displace. And let's just take this control C and let's go over to B displace. And let's just remove that one, two, three, four. And let's paste it there and we'll do the exact same thing here in this color. And we'll put that in the roughness. Oh, one other thing that I forgot to do is I need to also move the specular up a little bit to get some of that, that reflection area in there. So I'll just move that up to something like 0.4. Let's go back to, oh, this is a, a displace. And we'll do the same thing, specular, like, you know, something like 0.4. Okay, so now we're starting to see that we, we're starting to get some more reflective areas. I mean, you can even look down here, look at these things. These are very reflective. Okay, so if we look at our second plane, which is this one here, this is our B displace and this is our A displace. So we have an A and a B displace material. And as I look at this, I've got quite a bit more geo, but I actually wanna add a little bit more. So let's talk about that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this plane 01 and I'm gonna just say Shift D and I'm gonna move it. And I can move it up and down or whatever I want. And there I have it. So I've added that. And now let's go ahead and go back into our rendered view. And we'll start to see that, wow, that's 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 even better. Uh, that's given us a lot more, except our lighting is now a little bit strange. So let's go ahead and fix that. So to fix that, I'm gonna go into my material preview mode, the EV mode, because I can adjust lighting much quicker there and make sure that I've got this set up so scene lights and scene world are set. And then I'll select the sun and then hit RR twice and I'm going to move it around until I get something that I know that I'm going to like. So that looks a lot better. It's a little shallower for me and I think that's going to work uh, work okay. So let's go ahead now and render this and we start to see what we have. So actually it might not be bad uh, a bad idea at this point to go ahead and do a quick a quick render. Let's do that and there we have it. So if we look at these modifiers you notice we added a weld, a displace, a wireframe and a weighted normal. And there's some other things you could possibly do. There's other modifiers you could add. You could perhaps add a bevel, a vertex bevel, and create some more curves or rounded areas in those pipes. Another idea is consider playing around with a skin modifier, but be prepared. This can chew up and crash your machine really fast. So you don't want to try that on but a few faces at a single time. So that about covers it for this third part of our mini course on virtual displacement. Next, we'll focus on adding hero details as well as creating a more reality based render and we also are going to spend some time in the compositor showing you how you can get some of these cinematic effects stay tuned and we'll see you in the next part of the mini series